example for a lot of uh, uh, people to pursue for the, for those specific careers. This is a very good uh, benchmark for you to be able to say or how to deliver a world-class event and production. You would see multiple uh, talents coming in and out, unlike the usual local coverages that we usually do, which is run by one person. The production for this event has over like 60 people running it on backstage, you don't even see them. All you see are the talents from the English, Chinese, Indonesians, Philippines, and Thailand, which would amount to around 40 people. And having this close person-to-person -person encounter with them is something that's actually very beneficial for the local scene to somehow absorb on how it was actually delivered and how it was done the right way. And of course, for uh, for uh, aspiring gamers, would-be gamers, uh, the Masters had uh, this event called uh, the Pinoy Tour, which features uh, uh, gamers from all around the, the country to compete and get a chance to uh, get a slot for the Philippine qualifiers. So what, what happened was uh, there was a tour from Luzon to uh, Visayas to Mindanao where it, we involve our cyber cafe branches where they competed and experienced what it feels like to be part of a bigger picture. And of course, since they're all uh, part of the grassroots that we are uh, also we are also cultivating because somewhere somehow this is this there's going to be a new star coming in from uh, these these gamers from uh, all over the country or all over the region. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, um, I'm Patrick Manifasha from Drinks uh, TV. Uh, just a question for Sir Long and Sir Lord. Um, are there any plans to um, to host tournaments of this scale or a similar scale for other esports titles? Of course. It's a matter of time. The, top, the right timing is very, very important. As you would have noticed, the past three major events of the Stats Party in the Philippines are mainly in the MOBA genre. Uh, there is a specific requirement for a game title to be classified as an, an arena possible type of event. Uh, we ran Crossfire Stars last year also in SMX. It was also a very good event. And you would see from each and every community, you would know the right time that it is actually going to be ready. We have done a lot of events last year also with mobile games. Uh, Wade Glory, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, now uh, Mobile Legends as well. And once it reaches to a specific point that it's the right time, you're certainly going to see that on the lead stage as well. Very nice. Very exciting. Uh, sir? Yes. Uh, I'm Earl again. Mm, the first question can be answered by the people from ESL, and the second one can be answered by anyone from the panel. So, first question is related to what Patrick has said earlier. Uh, we had just we just had IEM Sydney just a couple of weeks ago. So, do you plan to do major CSGO events here in the Philippines? That's a mean question. Um, so, the truth is, um, we are currently working on the 2018 schedule uh, in partnership with Minasi, and there will be mega events uh, in Southeast Asia happening. Uh, I can't tell you now if that is Counter Strike or Dota or WhatsApp, uh, and I guess you understand. I see. Uh, and second question. Uh, so. ESL and Minesky have been doing events for two years now. So this is the second year that ESL is doing it with Minesky. Now, I think this is the right time to ask this question. Up in three years from now, so that will be a total of five years. So in the next three years, where do you see the future of esports here in the Philippines? Everyone can answer from the panel. Uh, How good yeah. events be? Actually, we're, we're seeing it right now that uh, eSports is becoming a mainstream sport here in the Philippines. Hopefully, within the next three years, with that, we'll see a smart, uh, the BLED group, uh, smart TV time. The BLED, we're, we're hoping that uh, it will be in the level of uh, the basketball, the volleyball. Uh, we're hoping to host uh, as 
met as well I mentioned we like to explore the opportunity of hosting a, an Asian Games for for esports if that's uh, if possible. Uh, that's from the time. I think uh, esports now is being recognized and I think it's going to be one of the sanctioned events already for the Asian Games. So that brings it to a, a totally different level, it becomes, it becomes a medal sport in an in a, in a, in a international event. So once that happens, I think the level uh, brings it to that level of it's like a national sport level for basketball. And that's where we see esports really going. And a few years ago we said that it's going to take time, but it's going to happen sooner than we think. So there will definitely be in three years' time esports superstars that the Filipinos can recognize. And what we also want to do is to make sure that we elevate uh, gaming into a new level so that it doesn't feel like it's just a distraction, especially from the point of view of parents. So once they see that esports definitely has a lot of um, skills and competencies required, and they they definitely are able to to get benefits from being players, and that's something that will definitely be happening in the next three years. Thank you very much for your insightful answers. Thank you. And we have a little bit more input there from, of course, uh, uh, Norm over here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Five years from now, I want to replace that SKP faker billboard in as next to a Filipino player from League of Legends. Wow, that's a nice thing to We have to have our local stars next year in a Palau. Billboard for us. Let's make it happen. There you go. Uh, billboards for the local stars. Something definitely a very, very nice plus. Earl, is that everything? No. Oh, thank you, thank you. You don't need height for Dota. It's going to be bigger. It's going to be bigger. Okay. So uh, uh, we have uh, last three questions from our friends from the media. Uh, take note, we do have a raffle for our friends from the media, so watch out. Okay, look at, look at the energy, just, just, look at, just went up. Okay, so uh, Ron, uh, welcome back. Uh, Jennifer, 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 from Southeast Asian Esports. Um, I just want to ask Lon, so since th we have a growing community right now, so with these big events, we are enticing new players to play Dota 2 or whatever major events we've had. As we all know, Dota 2 is pretty steep in terms of how mechanically skilled you can get. There's a lot of definitions, jargons, acronyms. Uh, how, would, how do you think casting could help in terms of helping noobs in general in understanding the game better? Uh, one of the things that uh, actually uh, we do with my partner Bruno as as we cast is we actually trim down the technical side of it and explain it into a much simpler mechanic or uh, term which we uh, we try to communicate because when you do casting in Philippines it's, it's a bit hard to actually communicate because not, not everyone understands English that's why we advocate Filipino casting, Tagalog casting and then when we uh, when we see something, uh, or when we see a very good play, we, we actually hype it up so that people can really understand it. But, well, if you, from a noob to an amateur to a professional, there are stages of that. And uh, right now, we are also developing some content wherein you can actually learn from, from, from great plays or maybe uh, votes from YouTube or strategies, discussion groups that will actually help uh, the noob to become more proficient in their skills. But uh, to tell you the truth, it's going to take a long while to actually achieve that, but we are actually laying the foundation for that. Thank you, 